the turban of enlightenment, the robes of revelation, and some crotchless panties. Does this 976 spank me? It is if you want it to be. Let Miss Cleavon reveal surprising things about your love. All right, we're doing the update here for the end of the week, end of the month, actually. And uh, as you saw in that video, um, I wanted to point out that I am not Miss Cleo. Heck, she's not even Miss Cleo. Um, I don't predict the future. I don't have any psychic abilities, or maybe I do, but it doesn't matter. Um, and I don't have a crystal ball. Everything I do is based off of good logic and uh, math, you know, the good numbers, statistics. Um, and, uh, you know, the three things that I say, observe, plan, and execute. That's what I do. Uh, there is no guessing, it might go here, it might go there. You know, that's a very newbie type of thinking in psychology, and be mindful of that, because that's exactly what you want to change. You know, one minute you're saying one number, and next minute you're saying another. You know, when you have no basis for your trading, you're going to have statements like that appear, and be mindful of them, and try to change that psychology. Again, I'll have the video out. Um, I'm running behind because I'm just busy this week, but it'll be out soon and you'll understand a little bit more in depth um, how to go about changing that. But those type of statements, I heard this, I saw this, um, well, it could go here or it could go there, maybe, da, 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 doesn't matter. You have a plan and you execute it based off of your observations. I don't care if it's not even a good plan as long as it is a plan um, and then you go from there. Of course, the more knowledge you have over time, the better your plans are going to be, right? Makes sense? It's common sense. Anyway, let's get to Bitcoin because I did just buy at 44K what I sold above here. And I do this in small pieces in 10% increments. So, um, you know, uh, BTC might be my biggest holding, but, uh, you know, I'm doing it in increments of 10%. So I have got... Uh, 10 ducks, and I just used two of them, right? I used one here, one there. I sold above here, bought back above there. So now I've got about uh, eight more ducks in the back waiting to line up and start to quack. <laughs> um, but anyway, you get my point. So this is a logical support point based off of this pattern right here. And we went down to it, we bounced a little bit, and so we'll see what happens from here. The next one down, would be around the 35k and this is based off of the breakout from here uh, breakouts usually get tested in markets people don't pay attention to this because they're so busy dreaming um, but often when you get a break at a big breakout um, you often will get a test to see if it holds as support and uh, this was a breakout point so this is 35k right here uh, that would be the next level down that I would be looking at and you can see where I bought in the past right here and sold up here bought back here and on and on and all I'll, I'll start to even add if we start to go to numbers at or below this and I'll start to get bigger into Bitcoin uh, because I want to kind of be fully invested by this summer uh, back into Bitcoin and have all my ducks quacking uh, and uh, that's what I'm looking for. So I'm looking for different levels of which we can go. And if they fill, fantastic. Um, remember, I, I try to do go for a cumulative return at the end of the year. And I've been able to do well above 100% for the past five years, uh, cumulatively. So every time I start, let's say I start with 100K, that goes up to, let's say, 400K. And then the next year goes up to 850 or 900K. And then the year after that, it goes up to 1.8. Uh, you know, so it, it, you see that's a cumulative return. That's what I care about because that growth means something. That's what uh, I'm doing to cumulatively grow my balances over time. And uh, that's just using good money management and good principles. I don't... Uh, leave things at a fixed amount and this is one of the things that, uh, you know as well as psychology you're going to need to understand is money management because if you're not doing this to grow your your balances 
then you're probably not a very efficient uh, trader and you're not getting the best bang for your buck. So that's very important to me. Um, that's one thing I don't want to leave out. I want you guys to understand because uh, in trading, uh, that's extremely important, is that you grow your balances off of good trading. You're going to have your ups and downs. Everybody does, uh, including me. Um, but what you try to accomplish t over periods of time and uh, you know, you're know you having a good success rate, a positive uh, integer of uh, gains over time uh, is important. So you, basically positive expectancy is what we call it uh, in your trading. And that just means you make money instead of lose it. Uh, a lot of people go into trading as if they're gambling and they don't know what they're doing and then they have their ups and downs and their wild swings. And usually they wind up losing because they're not trading based off of knowledge or good logic. And that's very important that you don't turn into that type of person. And it's just uh, rewiring your brain and developing a good psychology to start with. Uh, to avoid that. And then from there, money management and good trading principles. Uh, uh, and it's, that's basically it. And um, all right, so there's Bitcoin. We know what we're doing here. We've got here, buying back. Here is where I want to buy back at that 35K. And then let's go over and take a look at Ethereum. Ethereum went back into the buy area. Uh, right under the mid 1300 range and under and the next area of support is right around this 1200 and then all the way down to the 900 this is its largest support in the the low to mid 900 range so that's what we're looking on uh, an ethereum and then my favorite xrp as you know this is uh the buy point i'm holding on for this i, I have a very good understanding of what's likely to occur uh, so I'll buy the pullbacks and wait for that one to two dollars in, in the future and maybe even higher than that. Um, and that's basically it for right now. I, I don't see anything I want to, I'm going to wait for the new month to start and see how we, uh, we move before I uh, start going after any of these other trades. Uh, you saw what happened with GME last week. I, I don't have to really belabor that or, or go on about it. Where, where is GME? Where's my um, there's a few good things that actually happened. Uh, GME did pull back from that, uh, these levels up here, but again, still looking for the 200 range to trade during market hours. Uh, we did fill the gap. Yep. And I would start to buy it if we got back into the 70 years area under 80. Um, because I, I know the high probability that we're likely to go back up to these levels and pass it and get back to this area up here. Uh, so that's what I'm looking at a GMM. But uh, let's also look at let's look at one of my favorites that I've been very very patient on and built my short position on Tesla. And let's go over and take a look at that. I've got so many tickers on my screen because I've been searching for new trades. But let's take a look at Tesla. My short average, we're trading under it, which basically means I'm in profit now, which was amazing considering uh, the amounts that I shorted of this. This is probably my largest short position for a very uh, long time. And the reason why is simple. Um, this is, this valuation, it's just not sustainable. That's just it. And you have the technical pattern that goes all the way back down to under. 400 under 480 I mean 380 actually so this is looks like a fantastic trade so I'm expecting Tesla to get knocked uh, conversely I also have my um, I, I like Volkswagen VW I love their their um, car plan the rollout that they plan for the next few years and uh, I think they've got their their uh, their game together as far as that goes and um, so VW and they're kind of a breakout trade when I look at it on a chart let's go to a weekly chart and so you guys can see but this is more of a longer term play and this is probably one of my more boring ones a lot of people here aren't going to want to be paying attention but this is one that had some ridiculous move you know up to ridiculous numbers here let me show you the 
the stock itself is over counter so you have a better understanding. Um, this has been, uh, I've seen this from a long time ago. This is similar to the GME, the pump that it had. And uh, it's basically fulfilled a lot of the type of um, trading psychology. And this is an example of something that was shorted by institutions when it went all the way up to these ridiculous numbers up here and then fell all the way back under the 88.6, then it spiked all the way back up. And then now we're really looking for a breakout that could actually maybe with real valuations this time, get above these numbers here to start with, uh, this 270, 68, 70 area right here. Uh, once it passes there, then it's free to continue upward. And this, as a, this company has a, with their electric EV roadmap has a very good pros uh, prospects, excuse me. Um, so I'm really liking that. Then we also have our um, pot stocks. Let me go here. Uh, and let's make it one hour. We can see we got slammed last week after that parabolic rise. Uh, and the main one culprit of that was Tilray here. Oh my gosh. So you've seen that giant rise that went on up to the 60s, ridiculous, you know. Um, this was one of the ones why B&B &B was such a great short, because it had the similar, but uh, uh, yeah, let's go to B&B. &B. We can forget about the pot stocks there. The rest of them are kind of stabilized. Tilray was just an exaggeration, as was this. And Binance Coin was a great short, if you remember. Um, where is the, I guess I took off all the uh, drawings of it while it was over. But anyway, um, when it went above the, um, this level up here in the upper 330, around 328, I believe 27, 28, around there. And above, you know, some of the people here shorted it for 200. And, um, you know, anything under 240 was a great trade to 200 if you guys traded that that was a fantastic short and that again was also very parabolic and we'll see what happens with it if it crushes all the way down here it might actually look to become a buyer but it has to pull back it has a lot more space to pull back I'm not going to go on some of the more esoteric and out there names um, I think this video is long enough you get the idea it's the end of the month uh, I'll come up with some new ideas I'm looking for Again, on Bitcoin, we're looking for numbers for it to go all the way back down to uh, either find support here or to go all the way back down to the mid um, 30,000 range to start buying more. Other than that, that's the update for the end of this week and month. And have a great week.